Well, I'm tired of being a blogger. I decided to go to work as a factory. Let's go. Hello everyone! In this video, you'll learn how to make the most durable glass in the world, which can withstand not only sudden changes in temperature, but also extreme concentrated acid and alkali media. If you have ever baked a pie in glassware, you certainly used that very type of durable glass. Besides, such glass is used not only for cooking, but also in laboratories for chemistry experiments. Nowadays, almost all glassware in laboratories is made of heat-resistant borosilicate glass. Its coefficient of thermal expansion is almost the lowest among all types of glass, which is why such glass can be put right on the stove without fearing that it might fracture upon heating up. Even if you heat up such a durable glass in the oven and then immediately put in cold water, it won't crack. However, if you use ordinary silicate glass and put it in cold water, there will be lots of small cracks, which shows that it cannot withstand such temperature changes. In order to learn all the secrets of how to make such durable glass, I went to the city of Klin, to the oldest factory manufacturing laboratory glassware in Russia. Almost all types of laboratory glassware are manufactured at this factory, ranging from graduated cylinders to personal devices and machines. Before showing you all stages of manufacturing, I would like to show you what components are needed to make such hard and durable glass. Production of high-quality borosilicate glass starts from batch. Its components are delivered in such huge sacks. Main components are quartz sand, sodium nitrate, aluminum oxide, borax and also boric acid. I have taken a little bit of each chemical from the sacks. Now I am going to make the material this borosilicate glass bowl is made of. I poured into the bowl 36 grams of quartz sand, which consists of such shiny particles, which look quite unusual. It almost entirely consists of pure silicon dioxide, and it's brownish because of the tiny amount of iron oxide present in it. To make the batch, I weighted out 1 gram of sodium nitrate, 1 gram of aluminum oxide, 8 grams of borax, and 4 grams of boric acid. In theory, these are components needed to make durable glass. In reality, at the manufacturing site, things are done differently to how they are done in laboratories. Components of the batch are poured from big sacks into special sealed containers, and the needed amounts are measured out at the lower level and sent to the sealer conveyor belt. The conveyor belt sends all the components to the huge cylinder. There, they mix well and turn into a batch, and it is used to melt all the glass at this factory. I even threw a couple of shovel files of batch to the blast furnace, where all the components are melted together. However, when the worker came to see what I was doing, he decided to add a couple of shovel files of crushed glass, more, in order to reduce the melting temperature of such material. When put into the furnace, all the components heat up and melt in the glassy mass, which reaches 1500 degrees Celsius. All the batch and colored meltdown and the leftover glass along with water is poured through a special gutter to produce crushed glass. This is a very beautiful process to behold, and when red hot glass contacts with water, producing a lot of steam and shards of glass. On the other side of the furnace, the molten glass material is ready to be turned into chemistry glassware, which is why skillful hands of local glass blowers are needed. A worker grabs some semi-liquid molten glass material from the furnace with the help of a special tube and quickly starts shaping it before the glass gets too viscous. After making some peculiar adjustments, the glass blower slowly starts blowing the glass gold and inserts it 
into a graphite mold, which is cooled down with water. In order to shape the bubble, the worker blows the glass inside the mold, constantly spinning the glass, in order for the walls of the test tube to be the same thickness. In the end, workers simply shake off glass from the tool, and they get such bulbs, which will later be cut into shape. This is the first stage of making different laboratory flasks and other glassware from such highly durable glass. Making a laboratory flask takes no more than 20 seconds. Nevertheless, it is a strenuous job. I stood 4 meters away from the furnace, but I felt heat anyway. That is why we would respect glass blowers who toil within close proximity to the furnace for their hard work. Along with laboratory flasks, any other solids of revolution can be manufactured at this factory, including beakers and graduated cylinders. A lot of processes are done manually at this factory. When glass is blown manually, there are no side mold seams on such glassware. That is why such glass is supposed to be more durable than a regular manufactured glass. After the laboratory flask was blown to shape from glass blob, it is sent to a anneal and it slowly cools off at 550 degrees Celsius, thus reducing inner pressure inside the glass. If glass is not annealed, it can easily crack when heat even slightly. Once glass has been annealed, the sticking excess glass which remains after the glass blower shaped the glassware needs to be cut off. Other workers use special spinning platforms with glass furners for that. First, laboratory flasks are scratched with a tungsten carbide cutter. Then, that area is heated up with glass burners. There builds up internal stress where the glass is heated up, which is immediately released when the flask contacts with a cold tungsten carbide cutter. When the glass suddenly cooled, there appeared ideal and even cut in that heated place. After that, the excess upper glass bead is used as a color. After cutting laboratory flasks in shape, they are either turned into conical flasks or flasks with ground glass joints. If you didn't know, ground glass joints and cake clamps are used to connect different laboratory components like in the case with this glass distillation unit. Ground glass joints make sure laboratory glass components are properly sealed. Nevertheless, the process of making ground glass joints is quite interesting. First, a laboratory flask needs to be mounted on a special device and then the operating components of the machine need to be oiled in order for glass not to stick to its part accidentally. After heating, there starts forming a conical tube on the end of the flask, which will then be turned into a ground glass joint. As we can see after this process, now there is a place on the laboratory flask to which we can secure a cake clamp. But it is not sanded down yet. Sanding is done in a different place at the factory with a diamond cutter. As a result, we get a ready-made laboratory flask we can use for different purposes, for instance for distilling different chemicals. Besides laboratory flasks and graduated cylinders, this factory also manufactures thinner items, for instance such as a lean condenser. Almost all condensers, test tubes and other elongated glassware are made of glass tubes, which are manufactured in another factory. For instance, in order to make a, a lean condenser, First workers make those small balls from a tube by heating that tube with gas burners and then pumping it with air. The heated glass enlarges and a glass ball can be shaped in a graphite mold. I think you have noticed that all glass blowers wear special glasses. They are made of diademium glass, which is such a rare earth metal as neodymium. One of the features of this glass is that it blocks the yellowish light emitted by the hot sodium ions in the glass exceptionally well. At the same time, workers can see glass items much clearer. They end up getting such components for aline condensers. Another machine is used to manufacture ground glass joints for smaller size, 
which will also be used to assemble a link condensers. The whole process is automated here. Eventually all components are put together in another place at the factory, and it takes quite some time. I managed to capture assembly of a Graham condenser, but basically the principle of assembly is the same. So we have a unique opportunity to behold how professionals work with such a rare and quite expensive glass. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up at and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting. And in Tiristina got.